We heard in the first reading that we had this morning, the reading from Exodus, about all that Moses had done, delivering the people, the Hebrews, out of bondage in Egypt, bringing them up to the boundary of the promised land. And then we heard that Moses, the greatest prophet in the Old Testament, was not going to be allowed to enter across, to venture across the boundary into the promised land. Now for some, it's a sad story. And the question comes up, why? Why wasn't Moses going to be allowed to enter the promised land since he had done so much? I mean, getting the people out from under Pharaoh was the easy part. <laughs> Traveling with a quarreling people in the wilderness was the hard part. <laughs> But he had worked diligently doing what God told him to do to bring them that far. So why wasn't he allowed to go on into the promised land? Some say it's because Moses, after quarreling with the people who were quarreling with God, took it upon himself the appearance that maybe he had power. Remember at Meribah, the rock at Meribah, when God instructed Moses to speak to the rock and water would flow out for the people. Moses actually did speak to the rock and nothing happened. So he took his staff and hit the rock and water flowed out. That wasn't what God had told him to do. <laughs> now that seems a low point on the crime scale. <laughs> and then some say it was because the people had sinned so much along the way under Moses' leadership. Of course, <clears throat> Moses felt the brunt of that sin more than anyone there. But let's look at maybe that this isn't a punishment for Moses. So that Moses' task was to get them to the promised land. God, in our passage this morning, tells Moses, you're not going to go in over. But I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show you the big picture. And God, as only God can do, shows Moses. There's no place that you can stand and see all that God showed him. So in God's way, God showed him the boundaries of the promised land. And maybe that was enough. Maybe that was the prize to know Moses saying, I've done my task, I can rest now. Sometimes we don't know when to stop. And when let other people, in this case Joshua, who had been anointed by Moses, to go and lead from this point on, it makes a difference. So maybe that was the prize that God gave Moses. You're finished. Job well done. Here's the big picture of what, what I brought you to. In our own Christian motif, our promised land, the kingdom of God, where we will know no sorrow nor pain, will we, will, we will rejoin God in completeness. On that journey, it too is a mystical journey. As Moses was brought to the boundary of now, but not yet. 
our journey is full of now. The kingdom of God is upon us now, but not yet. It's, it's shrouded in mystery, but the thing is, we get glimpses of the kingdom of God every day if we're looking. For those saints who have gone on before us, they too received glimpses of the promise. St. Francis received glimpses of the promise of God in witnessing and giving Christ-like love to others. Being able to receive that and being able to give it. They received the showing of what the kingdom of God will be like in that glimpse as was Moses given a glimpse of what the promised land looked like. For us now, as disciples, as disciples of Christ, we gather glimpses, if we're looking, of, the God's, of God's promises in the same way. And I believe that's what keeps us going forward, is those glimpses of the promise. Those glimpses of the now, but not yet. And they keep us going forward. And in this realm, none of us will see the big picture. We'll see in full in this realm. But we're called to go forward and those glimpses of what can be, what will be, keep us going. You seen the 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 uh, usually it's used unfortunately in business programs of uh, motivational it's not the destination it's the journey um, for Christians it's both it's both the destination and the journey the journey is what transforms us the adventure of life is what transforms us in order to keep on going and to get to that destination. Both the now, the already, is as important for Christians as the not yet. And I don't believe you can separate those two. For Moses, the gift that God gave him just before he died was that God showed him hope Realized. Realized hope. What a gift. As we gather glimpses for what we hope in worshiping an all-loving God, may we be ever thankful for our journey with quarreling people, with quarreling priests. <laughs> with the time we say, oh God, how much longer? You know Moses said that a lot. <laughs> May we be thankful, though, for that journey with others along and through our life. Thankful for the adventure. Thankful that in our relationship, our intimate relationship with the Creator, with our Creator, even on the treacherous paths, not just when it goes good. Thank God for letting us see the glimpses of hope. For it is hope that shines light where we walk. And it is in glimpses of hope no matter how large a smile on a child, the peaceful death of a loved one, it's all glimpses of hope realized. And that is a gift, as it was to Moses. Amen. Amen.